Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, directors, magnificent colleagues, and dear friends. Uh, it's a great pleasure to speak about what the academic initiative of the Academy of Sciences and uh, Universities of the Czech Republic did uh, during the time of uh, the coronavirus crisis. And let me start uh, with what was it about? This is coronavirus, one of the seven human uh, coronaviruses. Four of them just cause a seasonal colds, and three of them have caused uh, uh, widespread pandem pandemics. It's SARS, which from bats uh, via civet cats came in the uh, three MERS, which again from bats uh, via camels uh, came around 2009, killed several thousands of people. And then uh, coronavirus 2, SARS, which uh, had the abbreviation NCON SARS. My students call it NCON V. Well, uh, it's a coronavirus, SARS-2, again uh, originating in bats, and uh, the uh, hosts uh, are pangolin, a bizarre animal. Then uh, it has infected about 13 million persons, and it has killed over 500,000, so shortened their lives. So here we have coronavirus, a beautiful virus. You can see the corona, the proteins on the lymphatic membrane. My colleague Tachezi says it's a most beautiful virus. I prefer HIV, but it's really very pretty about testing. So some molecular biology. My dream was to teach some minister molecular biology. We have the Ministry of Education here. The other ministers have gone away. So for five minutes, I'll try to teach all of you who don't need it, and the ministers and their deputies, some molecular biology. Testing for COVID. 19, you all know it from the media. We have two principles. Either we want to learn whether there are antibodies uh, in the tested person, antibodies against the pathogen. It's a very simple procedure, very fast and cheap. What you need is just a drop of blood to detect it. But there are many disadvantages. It takes about uh, two weeks after the person comes across a pathogen. And we also don't know whether the person is really ill. We only know that the person uh, came in contact with the pathogen. So it's not suitable uh, to detect whether the patient uh, can infect others. Tell that to people in Karvina. It's not suitable. No. Uh, then, uh, PCR, we uh, detect whether there is uh, RNA. But this is more demanding. It takes hours. It's more expensive. And it's rather unpleasant to have the swab. You, there are tears in your eyes. And it's not easy to do. It has to be an expert, because 30% of the swab swaps are false negative. The advantage is that we can see whether the virus is multiplying, and we know the infectivity of the patient. Here you can see this unpleasant swab on the left. Then the swab is uh, put into a test tube where it multiplies or reproduces, it is lysed, and then it can be put into a machine which does the RT-PCR uh, to find out. Uh, uh, so 
How is it done? PCR has been discussed so many months, so let's focus for three minutes how PCR works. There are several simple facts that kids learn, and even an average minister can understand it, a government minister. So you can see when the temperature goes up, above a certain level, so you can see the double helix <laughs> as uh, uh, it, uh, uh, in fact, uh, disintegrates, and then we can do copies. So what we need is a template. The DNA can be reconstructed, only copied. It's a copier. Then you need a primer. You need the beginning of the second strand. So the method here, it is described. And don't, don't be afraid. I once showed it in Libots at a center for seniors, for pensioners. I showed it to the people, to the old people, and we did the PCR. So you can learn it too. You can see the double helix of the DNA. And it was Carrie Mellis who, in fact, invented it in California one day as he almost had a car accident when he got this idea. Then he got the Nobel Prize because he discovered this method. It's based on several things I mentioned a moment ago, the double DNA helix. We heat it up. It disintegrate into the blue strands, and we add the specific primers uh, corresponding to the sequence. The primers sit on the DNA. We add the polymerase, which just copies DNA, but it has a template, so it synthesizes. Uh, uh, and you can see the new chains, the red ones. You wouldn't get the Nobel Prize for that, but the idea is that you reheat it. You have four strands which uh, disintegrate again, and when you cool them down, the primers get on, and the polymerase is a poor polymerase, just copies other strands. And now we have four strands. So now we have eight new ones. And what do we do? Those grannies knew it. We reheat it again. They disintegrate. We get the templates, and we cool them down again. Primers, polymerase. And again, the poor polymerase just copies 16 strands, 32, uh, etc. Uh, 256. And then there's one million copies out of a single strand. And if you do it 60 times, the product will weigh more than planet Earth, and that would be the end of the world. That will not happen because we'll run out of primers. But we can make a huge amount of DNA. That's why we call it a chain reaction. So out of uh, a single molecule or tens of molecules, we can do it. We do so much uh, DNA. We can detect it, so we can find out whether there was this RNA present. Uh, this was already done in the 1980s. And in this uh, institute, colleagues of Peter Bartuniak and others, we have the equipment, technology, and specialists. When at the end of February and March, uh, we realized that the RNA testing is the bottleneck. Then, maybe I was a bit naive, but uh, we said, OK, we can do it. We have the machines. But the Bartuniak was one of the first. But there were, of course, many others, Schalke, Pospisla, and Berno, Marianne Haiduk, and all modes. So we just decided to, to do what we can do. So the chief laboratories are in this slide. You can see the order, how they uh, were licensed. The Sharka Special, well, I think, was the first one. She will speak in the afternoon, then in Bena. Uh, 
and almost, almost at the same time, Marianne Hajduk will also speak. Uh, and then from the Institute of Molecular Translation, uh, Medicine, other colleagues, colleagues from Budějovice, uh, Dr. Lukáš, uh, then from Vestet, uh, we, from Biosev, that was Ruth Tachesi, and here in this excellent institute, Dr. Petr Batuněk from <coughs> Open Screen. He also got involved with Tsar uh, Shimkova, and they put together the information system for all the labs so that we can exchange information and complain and find solutions. I'd like to thank him. The Department of Natural Sciences, Budjavice, then the Microbiological Institute in Trzebo, and then Dr. Shacha, and many, many others, many labs, which just don't fit here, but over 250 qualified experts, and very often they worked in three shifts. And during several days or weeks, they have prepared diagnostic units, which could, in fact, in the labs, work full time. We progress tens of thousands of samples. I think this is great success. I don't know about uh, you, but I'll tell my grandchildren that I was there. As I said, we were a bit naive at first, but then we came across reality, the one of face mask, protective equipment, collection uh, vessels, or this wob, some were brought from China, and some were turned out to be rectal swabs. So that's not ideal, really. And uh, uh, there was no electronization of request forms, registration, uh, processing, circulation of samples. And Marian will speak about his uh, excellent team, and together with the Czech Army, they have handled it. But there were no reagents, kits, primers, nucleotides. When you buy a kit from China or Korea, you get it uh, normally, and uh, no one cares. Everything is automated. That's the usual business. Uh, and suddenly, we didn't have these things. So we decided an institute to solve the bottleneck, and that was the isolation of the RNA. And we could, uh, we then, because we didn't have the chemicals, so Pavel Shacha and his colleagues used magnetic uh, walls that we got from uh, another infrastructure, the regional the center of new technologies in Alamos and by Radex Bochel. So we got these balls, these beads, uh, magnetic beads. Uh, and uh, the, again, the double helix of transcripted. Uh, you know, in fact, the RNA uh, uh, sits on these beads. Everything else is washed. Off, then you have only the nucleic acid. Later, you also wash it off, rinse it, and the PCR reaction, which you know so well, which you could handle yourself, starts. So it is quite simple, but you have to work out the method so that it can be done anywhere, Trebon, Lisana, Labem, anywhere, so that it works a million times without any error. This, uh, uh, we have succeeded, and the modification, the method again was uh, uh, developed by Marian Haidu and the uh, dinner company, which is also present here. 
didn't have the beads from Olamos, but they, they made their own beads. So this method has been worked out in several sites. And uh, now, thanks to IOCB Tech, IOCB Tech, in fact, uh, donated 10,000 isolation kits to the National Health Institute uh, in Ostrava, where there was a recent outbreak. We have our colleagues, Blaskova, uh, Sulcova, and others. So much about testing. As uh, the uh, speakers before me uh, have said, I'm so glad uh, we could make it. And it was great how we could mobilize all our scientific forces. But let me say, this is not just testing. Uh, so, but I can relax. There will be publications. Don't worry. Uh, I know about excellent uh, research in Olamouth. Again, Marianne Haidu. Uh, there are other institutions like uh, UCHB. Uh, Masaryk University, medical departments of a university, alternative methods of testing. PCR is great, but if you could do it from saliva, it would be much easier. There is a method that has been perfected, it's not sensitive enough, which could do the identification not in six hours, but within 30 minutes. So we are also collaborating with the Biotech Institute, <coughs> and we can now test antibodies at our institute, and many laboratories are creating efficient inhibitors and viral replications, or also in the Parasitological Institute. There are other people who are also working on a vaccine, but in international collaboration. An example how we can succeed, the main enzyme, the RNA-dependent polymerase, and you can see it quite beautifully. You can see the cavity where the substrate is bound, and the RNA is the really <coughs> the uh, substrate when another molecule, which looks like a nucleotide, is added. You can see it has some structural characteristics that prevents the chain from growing. Polymerase stops, and that's uh, in fact medication against RNA. Again, uh, so this uh, uh, effect was what a student of Dr. Holly did. He decided to carry on with his career in California. He's now president of Gillard Sciences, and this is Remdesivir which at this moment is one of two authorized drugs for emergency use. It's used in Asia, USA, in Europe. We also have Remdesivir to, in fact, cope with coronavirus. It's an inhibitor of the polymerase. <laughs> Uh, slows down replication, so it shortens hospital stay. And we can hope it will save human lives. <coughs> so, my, uh, uh, again, for Petr Dvořák, our colleagues handled the structure of a protein. Radinitska, for example, and this is an enzyme which is blocked and the virus cannot replicate. So, a success. 
So, to conclude, I have also called a subtitle for my presentation, What We Have Learned. President uh, Vosag and the ministers have said that thanks to the infrastructure, we can now mobilize R&D capacities. It's a pleasure to see how people can improvise and work really fast. It's fascinating that barriers are broken in a crisis. Uh, well, the very small barriers between the Academy of Sciences and uh, universities are gone, and also barriers between industry and science. In the afternoon, there will be a presentation by Dr. Sedlacek. He will speak about the reagents. Uh, and how fast uh, some products were made, that was unthinkable before. We have great scientists and students who are ready and capable to really put in their time uh, to, to work as volunteers for a good cause. Now, the army, well, I, know, uh, I must say the army of the Czech Republic is really professionally, there are many uh, amazing professionals and it's good to have them. We can do almost anything. So. Let me thank, uh, yes, to the donors, uh, private sponsors. Um, they helped uh, a lot. So, also, IOCB Tech gave five million. Uh, the Experientia Foundation, Mr. Mstvošák, one million crowns to support uh, the Center of Dr. Haidu and idea at Serge EI. You will hear more about uh, them and the Volvo company. Let us have five cars. Uh, they loan them to distribute samples. Uh, dozens of people brought pizza, uh, baked cakes, made masks, and so on. The atmosphere was like in 1989 in autumn. So you can see Biosev. I could show you 10 pictures from other institutes. Um, that was a farewell party of Biosev. And these are the people who participated in uh, COVID testing, young, optimistic faces, uh, great hands, very skillful. That's the future, not only of our country.